Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before I begin on the stories, I just wanted to mention, if you have your own personal scary story that you would like to send me for me to possibly narrate here on the channel, you can do so by sending it to southerncannibal.com. Now that all that's out of the way, let's begin. At the time of the story, I was 11 years old, my sister 8 years old, and my brother 5 years old. My parents had left us home all alone. They couldn't afford a babysitter. We lived in a very sketchy neighborhood. One day I was at home with my siblings, and it was about 5 or 6 p.m. at night. I had heard a knocking on the door, and a guy on the other end asking to come inside. He claimed he was the police. I told my siblings to go upstairs and lock the bathroom. I snuck to the window and I looked outside. And I then see a scary looking man. I don't really remember what he looked like. I just knew he wasn't in an officer uniform. I very quickly and quietly ensured all the windows and doors were locked. I grabbed a kitchen knife and then found the house phone. Which at the time was connected to a wall. I called my mother. She told me it's probably just the neighbors and I probably just imagined everything. She said I should open the door to see if he needs flour or something. I knew this wasn't our neighbor and I tried to tell her, but she just said she had to get back to work. She also told me to not call the police because my parents would get in trouble for leaving us home alone. I was scared out of my mind and no kind of help was coming. I took myself and the kitchen knife upstairs and I locked the bathroom door with my siblings and I inside. I listened as the man pounded on all of the doors and tried the windows too. My siblings and I stayed as still as possible. It honestly felt like hours before he'd finally left and my parents got home. Later that night, I had heard a knock on the front door and I snug downstairs. It was an officer. He told my parents that apparently one of the patients from the local mental institutions had escaped that day. And our house is where his girlfriend used to live. He wanted to know if we had seen anything strange that day. I really hate to think what would have happened to us if I had actually opened the door and asked the man if he wanted some flour like my mom told me to do. My name is Jake. I'm a 22 year old male, and this happened to me about a week ago. I had just moved into my first new apartment. It was around 8.30 p.m., and I heard the doorknob moving, like someone was putting a key in it and turning and knocking. At first, I got really excited that maybe my boyfriend was home, but then I realized it was only 8.30, and he was usually due home from work at around 10.30, so I looked out the kitchen window and I didn't see his car or anyone's car I had known parked outside. And that's when I panicked. The doorknob kept moving for a few seconds and then stopped. A few minutes later, there was some kind of piece of metal that they were sticking in between the door trying to open up the door. I totally freaked out at that point and I locked myself in the bathroom with a knife and called 911. Whoever it was was trying to pry open the door for like three minutes before they finally stopped. The police finally arrived and surveyed the area. And what do you know? They found an elderly man roaming around with a knife and a crowbar. He used to live in that apartment, and he apparently wanted his stuff back that he thought we stole when we moved in. I was told that he was really delusional. I'm so thankful and glad that I didn't answer the door. Even to this day, my heart drops when someone knocks on my door. My name is Nathan, and this event happened to me when I was young. I was 14 years old when this happened. So when I was younger, I had spent the day helping a neighbor rake the leaves on his property. He was really friendly with my family, so he walked me home to say hi to my parents. We walked into the house and I had heard my mom upstairs talking. It sounded like she was on the phone and walking around. I called my dad, but no answer. My neighbor then says, Well, it sounds like your mom's on the phone. I'll catch them another time. 
and we say our goodbyes and he leaves. I go upstairs to see my mom, but I can't seem to find her or hear her anymore. I search the house, and it's empty. I'm thinking, did she leave the house while I was saying goodbye to the neighbor somehow? I called my dad's cell, and he picks right up. I ask him where he is, and if he knows where my mom went. He says, um, we're at the store. We've been running some errands for a couple of hours now. Instant goosebumps. Now, my neighbor and I both heard those footsteps upstairs, as well as a woman's voice. I have no idea who or what it was, but we both heard it, and it wasn't my mom. After my dad told me that, I hung up and I ran out of my house and ran to the neighbor's house. I told the neighbor about how my mom is at the store with my dad, so some other woman is in the house. My neighbor and I went together to check the house, and we looked everywhere, and there was no woman to be found. There was nothing. That is, until I went to my mom and dad's bedroom, and there was a window open. My parents came back home about 20 minutes later, and me and my neighbor told my parents what happened, and my dad was furious. My mom was really worried, asking if I was okay, but I told her I was. My dad ended up putting up security cameras on the house now, and we feel a lot safer. I still to this day don't know who that was in my house, and I don't think I ever want to find out. I'm a 19 year old female, but this happened when I was 14. My family went to my aunt and uncle's house for some reason. I didn't want to go, so my parents let me stay home by myself. They said they were only going to be gone for a few hours, but at about 10 p.m., my dad called me. Hey, Ashlyn, we're going to be staying the night at your aunt and uncle's place. I love you. Good night. I didn't even have time to say anything before I hung up on the phone. I got frustrated because I didn't feel comfortable staying home alone then. I started to boil some water and make some ramen. When I was about to put the ramen in the water... I had heard the doorbell ring. I went to go look out the window and the door, but no one was there. For some context, the window has one of those half circle ones at the top of the door. Anyway, I went back to tending the ramen when the doorbell rang again. I went to look again, but there was still no one there. My ramen was now done by this point, and I went to go sit on the couch to eat it. Once I was done and about to put the bowl in the sink, I had heard one of the basement windows then break. It was one of those windows that were very small and close to the ground. I just ran to my room at that point and I locked the door. After like 10 minutes, I slowly opened the door and there was nothing there. I went over to the basement door, which was right down the hall. I gathered all the courage to open up the door. It was really so dark down there, so I'd flick the light above the stairs on. But what I saw next was absolutely disturbing. On the bottom step, there was a man there. He looked to be homeless. He was extremely skinny, like he hadn't even eaten in weeks. He was also smiling from ear to ear, holding a knife to his side. I just slammed the door and ran back to my room. I had a bit of a problem here. I left my phone on the coffee table in the living room, so I couldn't call the police. I then heard the basement door open. I just dove under my bed as I heard his footsteps getting closer. I heard my doorknob start to jiggle and shake. Then, I heard a small maniacal laugh. I got out from under the bed and started to open the window, and he then started banging on the door. I got the window open and jumped out. I ran to my neighbor's house, and they let me in to call the police. They arrived in five minutes and searched the house, while another cop started talking to me about the incident. They eventually found the man, and they brought him out in cuffs. They told me they found him hiding in my closet. I was terrified at this. I went in to grab some essentials, and I asked them to take me to my aunt and uncle's house. They did, and once we got there... I then told my parents everything that happened. It made me so scared to think that he was waiting for me to come back. 
I developed severe paranoia, and I had to start going to therapy in 2019 for this. Luckily, I'm doing better now. At last I heard about the man, he was still locked up. Probably for something else. I was told he's going to be sent to a mental facility on July 21st, 2022. And I really do hope that he gets the help he needs. Hey everyone. Apologies for the brief interruption on the stories. But I want to thank today's sponsor, ShipStation, for sponsoring today's episode. Sometimes you can get by doing things the hard way without realizing it. But when you're running a business, doing things the hard way means you're holding yourself and your business back. And ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers an easier way to manage their shipping. So you can take all the energy that goes into managing orders, choosing carriers, and printing labels, and use that to grow your business. It's no wonder ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. I really love ShipStation personally, because it really does all the legwork for you. It's really great for people who have their own Etsy shop, Instagram store, and so on. Another cool thing is you can also get deeply discounted shipping rates that are normally only reserved for Fortune 500 companies. So they also help out the little guys too. ShipStation is a magic but it will make your shipping stress disappear. Sign up using promo code CANNIBAL for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com and start breathing easier with every shipment. That's two whole months of stress-free shipping, and it's free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in CANNIBAL. ShipStation. Make ship happen. When I was 12 years old, my friend Danielle and I were home alone hanging out, just listening to music and goofing off like normal kids would. All of a sudden, we hear people talking on our deck. We thought it was her mom at first, because we heard her laugh, and you can definitely tell it was her because it sounded different than normal people. Not in a bad way, though. Anyway, we were going to open the door for her, but I looked out the window that leads to the deck and there was no one there. We kind of just brushed it off to our minds playing tricks on us. A little while later, I would say about 15 minutes, we heard the car door shut in the driveway. So again, we ran to see if she was home, but she wasn't. My friend was getting worried, so we then went into the bathroom and locked the door. We sat there for a little bit. We also had the police on speed dial because we really thought someone was going to break in. After a while of not hearing anything else, I finally told her she was being ridiculous. She begged me not to go out of the bathroom, but I couldn't take it anymore. I walk out of the bathroom while she stays in. I sit on the couch that faces the front door. I sit there in the somewhat dark room and just stare at the door. I wasn't really sure of what I was doing. Her dog was also slipping on the couch right next to me. I'd also like to mention then her dog was very old and never barked or growled at anything. And I mean never. Anyways, I'm still sitting staring at the door when the next thing you know, I then see the doorknob start to jiggle. I tried to brush it off, but I couldn't at this point. I couldn't brush it off because as soon as the doorknob moves, my friend's dog starts going crazy and doing a whole lot of barking. I run to the bathroom and I start to panic. I tell my friend what was going on and she also starts to panic. We just sat there in silence until we finally built the courage to get out of the bathroom. We never did tell anyone about it, only because we knew no one would believe us. So yeah, to whoever or whatever it was that night, I really hope we don't encounter you again. Back in September, I moved out of my parents' place and into my own new townhouse. It wasn't anything extravagant, but it was mine, and it immediately started feeling like home. I live in a quiet neighborhood where basically there's no crime, and everyone keeps to themselves. At the time this story took place, I lived completely alone. I wasn't really sure what to make of it, and I still have more questions than answers. 
Everything was going really great in my new place for about a week. That was until one night, at about 3 a.m., I was home alone asleep when I then awoke to the sound of my doorbell ringing. I thought for a moment that I might have just dreamed it, but my fears were confirmed when I then heard the doorbell chime once again. Surely no one ringing my doorbell at 3 a.m. had good intentions. My bedroom is on the second floor and looks straight down to the front steps. I sat, trying to will up enough courage to look outside. I eventually felt confident enough to look, but to my surprise, there was no one there. I honestly wasn't sure whether this made things better or if it just made the whole thing even more unnerving. I eventually calmed down and then slept for the rest of the night. I later on checked outside in the morning, but I didn't see anything. I went on with my day and just forgot about the whole thing. Fast forward a few weeks and the same thing happens again. Once again at around 3 a.m. A feeling of dread filled my body as I sat bolt upright in bed. I could feel my own heart beating in my throat. I cautiously peered through my curtains, and again, no one was there. This was just not making any sense. My doorbell never rang on its own during the day, and it was way too high for any animal to reach it. This occurred several more times in the coming weeks. It was always in the middle of the night around 3 a.m., as though it were planned. One day, though, it just stopped altogether, and it hasn't happened again. I am relieved that this eerie and unnerving incident no longer occurs, but I still often wonder why this happened. Had it not always happened around the same time, it might have had a better explanation, but I have no good reason for why this happened. This has since stopped though, and I'm thankful. I'll be sure to provide an update if anything starts to happen again. I'm the youngest of four. I have three older brothers, Jake, Slater, and Bobby. My parents were very protective of me. Everywhere I went, one of my brothers always had to go with me. After my 15th birthday, my parents finally decided to allow their daughter to stay home by herself while they and my brothers went out to the movies. But I wouldn't be all alone per se. I had my two dogs, Lil, a Dutch Shepherd, an eagle, a Labrador slash bloodhound mix. I was watching TV when I started feeling like I was being watched. I decided to go around the house, making sure all the doors and windows were locked. Lil and Eagle followed me. When I got back to the living room, I noticed that the remote was moved from the coffee table to the couch. I thought nothing of it, thinking I must have just moved it when I got up. I decided to go to bed until my family finally got home. I called to my dogs and went to my room. At around 10.30 p.m., I started to hear movement in my parents' room. I thought it was them. Suddenly, I get a text from my brother Slater, then saying, Hey, uh, we're stuck in late night traffic. We'll be home soon. I froze after I read that. I texted him back. Um, if you guys are still stuck in traffic, then who is in mom and dad's room? After a few seconds, Slater texted back, Hide. I then slowly went into my closet with my dogs. My mom had called 911. The next thing I know, the closet door then slammed open and I see a tall man. He was just about to grab me when Lil and Eagle then tackled him to the ground. I thought that I was safe until another man appeared and dragged me to the bathroom. It was another tall man. He told me if I screamed, I would be sorry, and I was too weak to fight back. He didn't realize that he didn't close the door all the way, and my dogs came busting in and then attacked him. I then got up and ran outside with my dogs behind me. I ran into the arms of a police officer. More officers ran inside and then found the intruders all bloodied up. My parents and brothers finally got home, and when they saw me and saw the shape I was in, both my dad and my brothers had to be held back. The intruders were arrested, and there was eventually a long, drawn-out trial. They did end up going to prison, 
but not for as long as they should have. My family and I all ended up moving shortly after the trial. It really was the worst experience of my life, and I really just want to move on from it now. <laughs>